One two nucleophilic addition to carbonyl, as I've pictured here, is the key reaction of aldehydes and ketones. We picture a pair of electrons from the nucleophile being used to make a bond to carbon. That nucleophile is drawn to carbon because it has a partial positive charge, a result of polarizing the carbon-oxygen double bond because the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon. While that bond to carbon is being formed, the pi bond breaks to put a pair of electrons on oxygen and a negative charge. I've redrawn that graphic to the left so we can take a look at the steps that follow. The initial step is typically a reversible addition to carbonyl. Although it doesn't have to be the case, the nucleophile often is negatively charged, and we end up with a negative charge on oxygen. In this case, the nucleophile is neutral. The second step of this two-step addition process is a proton transfer to oxygen. We picture a lone pair of electrons on oxygen being used to make a bond to the proton in a reversible protonation step. The overall net effect of this two-step nucleophilic addition adds a nucleophile to the carbon. The nucleophile always adds to the carbon and a proton to the oxygen. Cyanide addition to carbonyl to make a cyanohydrin fits this picture. In cyanide ion, the negative charge is on carbon along with the lone pair of electrons. That pair adds to carbonyl carbon as the pi bond breaks. This is a reversible addition, and in a subsequent step, oxygen is protonated to make the cyanohydrin. I've shown these as reversible reactions, and they are. The equilibrium favors product formation when there are significant amounts of cyanide present. And are cyanohydrins important? Well, actually, yes. First of all, this is a very mild way to make a carbon-carbon bond, and carbon-carbon bonds are important as they allow us to build bigger molecules from smaller ones. Related to this, cyanohydrins are important intermediates that let us make other kinds of compounds by manipulating either the hydroxyl group or the nitrile. I'll show you that in a minute. And thirdly, there are several naturally occurring cyanohydrins. These compounds tend to confer protection on plants that make them as protected cyanohydrins that can release cyanide gas, which is lethal. Take a look at some of the synthetic potential. Cyanohydrins can be hydrolyzed using aqueous acid to make alpha hydroxycarboxylic acids. These compounds then can be used to make other compounds we'd like to have, such as sugars. The cyanohydrin formation is a key step in a very famous synthesis of sugars. Alternatively, the nitrile group can be reduced using lithium aluminum hydride. We need water in a second step to make a primary amine, an amino alcohol. These compounds are valuable intermediates to other things. So the synthetic utility of cyanohydrins is significant. Their occurrence biologically is interesting. A cyanohydrin made from acetone attached to a sugar that is found in the cassava plant. Uh, another well-known cyanohydrin is based on benzaldehyde. They're found in apricot pits and cherry pits and bitter almond. When these guys are ingested, metabolism removes the sugar. To make the cyanohydrin itself, which simply hydrolyzes in that equilibrium reaction we talked about to make acetone, and releasing cyanide. Of course, cyanide in significant doses is lethal, so this confers protection on the plant. The same steps apply to the derivative from benzaldehyde. So you make almond flavor while you're making cyanide. Interesting that plants have figured out how to use a cyanohydrin derivative as a protection agent. 